the course of the year, I teach Lego robotics, I teach hunter safety, I teach an outdoor science class with three-dimensional kites, and then the really, the really fun part for me is on B days, my STEM class is a, a class I've designed myself. And so in quarter one, um, I came up with a one pallet challenge where the students get one pallet and they have to try to turn that into a go-kart. And then in quarter two, we do, um, we do an art um, and engineering project with a balancing bird. And then in quarter three, we do a game design um, unit and then in quarter four, uh, quarter four we do I do a collaborative project with the band teacher and we do a sounds of science, which is really fun. And I think that what makes it unique is that I have the freedom to try those kinds of things. And as an educator, in that that is really important to me. And I think that we need to have those places where we can be creative and where we can take some risks and we can try some innovative things. And I think that all goes back to our administrators. You know, I'm so lucky lucky to have an administrator that supports, you know, me taking some of those risks. And I feel like it's okay. And if it doesn't work out, I'm I'm not, you know, we reflect on that, but I'm not, I know that it's okay to take those risks. And I think that's a really important part of starting to be innovative in our teaching. Uh, Dr. Abelson in Laramie and Mr. Richards, you know, they were, they were really, really good teachers and, um, you know, created a love of science. And I think that ultimately it was that love of science and wanting to share that excitement and see people get, you know, those aha moments and stuff. I think a lot of my, my drive to teach came from that, from out of, out of a love for science. I think one of the things that's different between maybe our regular science classes and what we call a STEM class where we're adding in the engineering um, is that it's a lot more applicable to real world. We're identifying a real problem. I mean, there's, not, there's nothing that we do in these classes where we don't first identify a real problem that needs to be solved and then start into solving it. Um, you know, I don't want science, kids doing science just for the sake of a grade or anything like that. I think that the real benefit of STEM is that it makes it real. Um, and it, and they're, they're, they're benefiting mankind and humanity and adding to the world. And that's, I think that's the beauty of it. And that long-term problem solving, I think that's what, what they gain out of it, is that ability um, to look at, look at a challenge and then create a plan and be able to problem solve. In some of the challenges and some of the problems, the, the STEM activities that we do, um, I want to push them to the point that they experience some failure and that they feel some frustration because we have this group of kids that comes to us that is so always about, you know, being right the first time and it has to be perfect and I, and I want this A and, and I think that I want to take them to that point where they feel that frustration and they feel a little bit of it didn't work out because I think that we need to develop persistence and grit. And there is a certain element in STEM and engineering that you can take them to that. I mean, you obviously don't want to push them beyond their frustrational point, you know, I mean, but a little bit of frustration really helps them and that they can work through that. I think that is a beautiful thing to teach a kid is that it's okay if it doesn't work out, but you have to be persistent and you can't just give up. And if there was one skill I could hope for them, I guess that would be it, is that we don't give up. So the project this year, I have an example of it. Um, in September, um, the students, uh, I, I ask them to start looking for problems in, in our world that, that are worth solving. And so they were looking at the newspapers and watching news on TV and they noticed that there were a lot of pedestrian fatalities that were reported around August and September. And so um, they decided to come up with a way to increase pedestrian visibility. And so they came up with this duct tape vest um, and it just, look at this, so anyway, it's, you know, it's really easy to put on. It has some ties on the side, um, costs less than $2 to make. Uh, they started out with wearable circuits. They bought an Arduino board. They had conductive thread. I mean, they were, you know, it was going to be pretty high tech, but then they realized that their vest was also going to cost $80. <laughs> and they wanted, the, the ultimate goal was to be able to give these vests to anybody in the community that didn't have refle reflective clothing on. And so they worked with um, our local law enforcement and our 
sheriff's office and um, all the sheriff's vehicles and also the city cops have these uh, reflective vests. Um, that's all the bigger they are. You can put them in your pocket and uh, but they can hand these out for free because you know they're they're fairly inexpensive. We had a 4-H club that donated to the project. We had a, a elementary classroom that was working on measurement. Um, they built them in the classroom. We had a, a local youth group. So really, it, these projects that we're doing are they're very multifaceted. Not only are they involving you know engineering and design, they're also um, solving a problem in our community, um, pulling our community together. And, and that's really the projects that, that do well are the ones that, that have that broad focus. So I worked with um, Evan Bradley, who is a brand new music teacher in our building, first year teacher, and he just did an amazing job. And so together, we kind of, kind of came up with what we wanted um, his band students to learn about engineering and what we wanted my engineering students to learn about music. And the engineering students uh, built the instruments and the music students, the band students, that they, they had their band partner played Row, Row, Row Your Boat. You know, they're learning and they're seeing that, you know what, I can achieve things if I really try and put the effort forth. And I see that success in our kids going on. And it's interesting to see how those kids are going on and being much more successful than they would be without that um, ability to take risks and chances and not be afraid of failure and, uh, and not be afraid of success either. And, uh, you know, we're training kids now for jobs that don't even exist, and especially in the state of Wyoming where STEM is a huge piece. And there's two different ways of looking at it. There's college readiness and there's career readiness and the need for both those, but in the same room, she does a nice job of blending those two together that making kids ready for the future, whatever that holds for them, you know, whatever doors are going to be open later on, uh, what she's doing by preparing kids to be successful and take those chances. It doesn't matter if they're ready for college or ready for careers they're ready to be successful after high school and that's where the the roots are being are put down right here at the middle school and I think she does a great job of getting kids prepared for the future we don't even know what it's gonna look like either which is awesome it's how you incorporate all those pieces that we want kids to learn about in a real-world problem and so Mrs. Harnish and I started talking and looking at things and how we can make this real for kids real learning and uh, and incorporate all those skills that are necessary to be successful and so we looked at some of the science contests like a uh, e-cyber mission and Christopher Columbus Awards and said, let's jump into it. And she was willing to do that in Science Fair and had a lot of success with that. Our students have been extremely successful. We've had uh, three teams make it to the national level, um, two teams to the national championships over the last five years. So it's, it's incredible for a small school competing against the nation. We're talking from California to New York and all those in between and being that successful because of, of her efforts with the students. And we have bright students in Wyoming and they're great kids, they work hard and that's the piece that we've done. Uh, we have to get where the kids are at, their world. They like to be hands-on, they like to be able to do things, they like to be active with that. And if we sit back, we're missing the boat. This that about success of students and, and how can we get the kids engaged in learning and she does that and that's why well deserving of the word. I'm sure there are a lot of great candidates out there and I'm not saying that, but this is top notch for sure. So a lot of our STEM activities really comes out of the fact that we want to see learning take place rather than just see the results of tests. And so we're trying to create an active learning environment all the way across our district. And I think one of the things that sets Mrs. Harnish apart is her true commitment and energy level that she brings to it. There isn't anything that she won't tackle with her kids if, it's a, if it has a, a good education purpose and she's given our students a variety of, of opportunities to not just explore and that's something that we're trying to get past in our district we don't want our kids just to explore but we want them to experience the full gamut of what it takes to bring an idea to the table process that idea and then also to come to full fruition with that and that might be a uh, coming up with a product might be able to come up with a business idea but all of our kids who come through mrs. Harnish's class have an opportunity to experience not just coming up with a brainstorming a great idea but also coming up with a process to bring that to real life and, and uh, she's done that better than any other educator that I've ever seen and have been around. We've seen a, a growth in in the STEM interest in our community and, and what we've tried to do is to not be the roadblock or the hurdle. What we've tried to do is to support our teachers in their innovation and uh, trying to reach kids at a different level. When I think about failure, I think about persistence and grit. You know, we all come to failure. 
teachers, students, we all feel it. But the thing is, is that we have to work past it. We have to, failure is just something we learn from and it leads us to success.